Psalms 139, 14 through 17. I give thanks to you, for I am awesomely and wondrously made, marvelously set apart are your works, and my being knows it well. My bones were not concealed from you when I was shaped in a hidden place, knit together in the womb upon the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body, and in your scroll all of them were written. The days they were formed, while none were united. And how precious are your thoughts to me, O all! How great has been the sum of them! Now did you know that every single strand of human instructions is marked with the name of Elohim? How, you ask? because there are sulfide bonds holding together the two strands that make up the instructions. These bonds occur after the tenth pair of nucleotides, again after the fifth pair, and then six pairs later, and again five pairs later. The tenth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Yod, the fifth letter is He, the sixth letter is Ua or Wa. Yod He Uahe spells Yahuwah. I will say it again. Elohim's name, Yahuwah, Yod He Uahe, is on every human chromosome. You are made in His image and sealed with the name of your Creator. All of the Creator's instructions in your body are hallmarked, and it is this very sacred hallmark that the enemy desires to obliterate. By putting loaded foreign sequences into the instruction scroll, one can sneak fragments of foreign enemy instructions through the carefully guarded nuclear walls and unload their contents into the scroll of the instructions that Elohim wrote for you. That's like pasting some pages of a counterfeit author's book into the middle of the instruction blueprint that Yahuwah wrote. What is actually happening is that the name of Elohim, written into the bond arrangement and the set-apart scroll, is being erased. The beautiful scroll, engraved by Elohim to create a man in his image, is being sabotaged. And from that moment of rewriting onward, instead of instructions being released from the palace for life, health, and security of the body, the inserted instructions loads up a new false instruction trolley with instructions for the natural factory and the Creator's instructions outside the palace to start manufacturing the enemy instructions. Our natural factory just does what is told. Whatever orders arrive from headquarters are immediately carried out. To put it simply, once the Trojan horse is given access inside of us, Every single citadel guarding the scroll signed with the name of the Creator within you is hijacked and forced to issue instructions to manufacture the destructive instructions, which will not only completely corrupt you at some point, but also the people around you. It is a cleverly made attempt on a worldwide scale to throw off the rulership of Elohim over His creation. So who is behind this dastardly plot? What does Psalms 2 say? In verse 2 of Psalms 2, The sovereigns of the earth take their stand, and the rulers take counsel together against Yahuwah and against his Messiah, and say, Let us tear apart their bonds and throw away their chains from us. Is it not the carefully placed Creator's instructions that depict his set-apart name which are disrupted and broken asunder by the contents of the Trojan horse. The word chains is a both in Hebrew, also means entwined rope or cords. Are not the Creator's instructions entwined like a rope? Perhaps you can now see the plan of the kings of the earth, the rulers who are banding together and arranging themselves against Yahuwah. The plan is to hijack his creation, get rid of his image, remove his signature, and transform the human body into a grossly modified human PC hybrid which can be controlled externally. Sounds like science fiction, but tragically 
it is the truth. The Satan hates all who are made in Elohim's image. Every earthen vessel that is intended to become a dwelling place of his spirit, receiving daily communication from the throne room of the heavens. For centuries, he has been content to defile the bodies and souls of men by enticing them into committing sin of every kind. But always, his greatest ambition has been to sit in the place intended only for Elohim, which is inside of our very being. 2 Thessalonians 2.4 The son of destruction, the lawless one is revealed, who opposes and is exalted above all that is called Elohim, or that is worshipped, so that he sits as the father Yahuwah in the dwelling place of Yahuwah, being accredited that he is Yahuwah. Many are waiting for the third temple to be built, so that the anti-Messiah can go and sit in it. But the body of Messiah is the third temple, a temple not built with hands. And the diabolical deception has been underway and continues till today. The first step in this rollout of the plan is to install more abominations that cause desolation right within the set-apart place of the third temple in the set-apart place, the place where the unique engraved scroll of your Creator is stored in a walled citadel. The enemy has already lifted up his battle cry. How apt is the cry of the psalmist? In Psalm 74, 3, it says, Lift up your steps to the endless ruins. The enemy has done all evil in the set-apart place. Your adversaries have roared in the midst of your appointed times. They have set up their own signs as a beacon. It seems as if one had lifted up axes among the thick trees. And now, all its carved work, they have broken down with axe and hammer. They have set fire to your set-apart place. They have profaned the dwelling place of your name and cast it to the ground. They said in their hearts, Let us destroy them all together. They burned all the appointed places of Elohim in the land. We do not see our signs. There is no longer a prophet, nor any among us who knows how long. O oh, Elohim, how long would the adversary reproach? Would the enemy despise your name forever? Why do you hold back your hand, even your right hand? From the midst of your bosom, end it. For Elohim is my sovereign from of old working deliverance in the midst of the earth. There is no better description of what is happening everywhere within everyone than these words. And in every nation, believers are being coerced by the Satan and his minions into receiving his instructions over the Creator's precious name. Is this not causing even more falling away than that of the religions of men described in 2 Thessalonians 2.3? The totality of the scheme is to leave the third temple desolate, destroyed, overtaken, and subjugated to an ancient enemy who always coveted Elohim's throne, our heart, and the worship of Elohim's bride. The Greek for falling away means defection from truth and comes from Strong's G647, which means to separate, a writing of divorce. How significant that a fragment of the Creator's original design is what separates or breaks asunder the record of Elohim's name that is written within us on our instruction scroll. Now obviously, the smuggling in of the Trojan horse into the guarded throne room involves deception and subterfuge. No one would allow such an intrusion into their temple if its true contents were advertised. The deception is enacted under the guise of a delivery of a basket of wishes for health and happiness. Revelation chapter 18 speaks of the judgment that is incurred by those who carry out this deception. As you read the selected verse, remember that the Greek word translated sorceries is pharmakia, the word from which we get pharmacy or to dispense medicine. Revelation 18, 23, for your merchants with the great ones of the earth, for by your sorceries all nations were deceived. So it is pharmakia deceptions which are employed to pull the wool over the eyes over all the nations. 
2 Thessalonians 2.11 says, A strong delusion is released so that people believe the lie. The Greek word for delusion, Strong's G4108, planos, comes from a root word meaning the deceiver or imposter. The reoccurring theme is deception, which brings destruction. So it is no surprise that pharmakia also means witchcraft and comes from a root word meaning drug or poisoner. Poison is intended to induce the death of the victim. In Leviticus 17.11, the word tells us that the life is in the blood. It is surely no coincidence that the foreign deceptive instructions, which the body is forced to produce after it is hijacked, triggers coagulation in the blood, which in turn causes internal desiccation of Yahuwah's creation. It is the Satan who seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. Yahushua HaMashiach came that you may have life and have it without end, and the Satan desires to remove Elohim's light and replace it with his image, which is darkness. Revelation 14.9 tells us that he has fooled us into taking an image, mark, or sign of his, which is the religions and the traditions of men, and remove Yahuwah's. Revelation 14.11 Ask yourself, who else could be behind the erasing of Elohim's name in your set-apart life scroll? Beloved Elohim says, My people perish for lack of knowledge. Many religious leaders worldwide are urging their congregations to receive Satan's offer. May the sheep wake up and see the age of the precipice before they plunge over it. I would urge you to guard and keep your temple most set apart unto Yahuwah. Do not allow it to be breached. Cherish Yahuwah's name written in the instructions, the scroll of life within you, and take refuge under the shadow of his wings. Do not run back to Babylon for help. Do all that you can to protect your wondrously built natural defenses, and do not allow yourself to be misled. Be a lover of truth, seek truth, and go after the light. Do not succumb to those who call evil righteousness and scheme to overthrow and render your temple set apart place desolate. You will pay for it with your very being. Rather, entrust yourself to him who is the way, the truth, and the light which brings life. Choose life and walk in the light. And I want to end with 2 Corinthians 6.16. What agreement does the temple of Elohim have with idols? For you are the temple of the living Elohim. As Elohim has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate and take hold of Yahuwah and do not touch the unclean thing, and I will receive you and I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says Yahuwah Almighty. Unclean thing and the word for unclean in Greek is Strong's G169 Akathartos, unclean, corrupt, defiled, and demonic. May Yahuwah Almighty give you the strength to stand, not compromising in the days which we are facing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.